You'll never see it coming. Wrong game. Oh, uh, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Anime Club. Uh, we've got some odds and ends to talk about with the Persona Three movie series. So I think before we let Realm um, do a do a shift, um, we're gonna mention recommendations we have if we were if we liked this. Uh, Nick Nack, you first. Do you have any recommendations based on Persona Three the movies? If you like the movie, just go play other Persona games. Looking at the game end. Hmm. <clears throat> as far as like recommendations based off tone and stuff, that's a little rough. You don't have to give a recommendation if you don't have one. I don't, there are stuff I could recommend, but I don't know that I can see where people would really care for these movies enough to recommend it. Okay, so then no. Vorn? Uh, play the game according to Realm, or Duncan Rope, I guess? That, that's all. Yeah, I feel like the the game is the easiest thing to say, like, go do. Um, I don't... This this is basically um, an emo-as-fuck slice-of-life show. Yes. yes. This is the yes. most emo slice-of-life show you could possibly watch. High school angst. Um, also, I mean, I, I just keep in mind, there's a lot of, like, people shooting themselves in the head in this show. We didn't really mention it before, but, like, actively, like, that's how they activate their powers. And that's kind of not okay. It bothers me quite a bit. I know Nick Knack's aware of this, but it, it actually does bother me. And I know it's not the case in the later games, apparently. Mm -hmm. But... Because it changes from game to game. Yeah, but in this one, th to activate their powers, they have to shoot themselves in the head. Yeah, that, I didn't care for that either. I'm not gonna lie. First time I saw my like, thrill. Hmm... It's mm. it's a it's a little, I I'm not the hugest fan of that. It's it feels a little tone deaf. What do you mean tone deaf? I mean it's basically idealizing suicide. It's not idealizing, but I'll, it, it, I'll, get, to, I'll okay, get to it later. Uh, realm. I'll, I'll it, get to it. It later. kind of is. It's glorifying these people shooting themselves in the head and saying that they'll get powerful Literally, if they shoot themselves not in the head. Literally, they're committing suicide. But yeah. But it's, as far as the imagery goes, they are taking that exactly yeah. to the point yes. where the opening cutscene is supposed to fake you out thinking, uh, "What's her name is committing suicide." Yes. Oh, yeah, that, that yeah. is true. It's, yeah, I do remember. It's that idealizing part, yeah. the imagery, and therefore it you can associate it to suicide. It's it is a bit disturbing, in yeah. my opinion. And it's it's the kind of disturbing that uh, I, I think some 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 schools of um, literature. Uh, analysis would say is kind of problematic yeah yeah i guess i mean i yeah. i know that it's the mechanic right yeah. it's just yeah. it feels like it's uh making light of the action of shooting yourself in the head okay which is yeah. not something you want to do yeah. and i will say like i said i didn't bring this up in like themes or animation or something this is a personal issue for me yeah you know like i could see how people are not bothered by it in fact i just read a fascinating article about um media uh, and violence uh for one of my classes but I mean, if, if I want to throw in a little pushback, I'll say that Japanese uh, society's always been a little bit less touchy about that than Western society. Yeah, really. and I mean, you're you're going to be able to say the same thing about me when we watch Dorarara, because yeah. part of the main plot points of the first couple episodes of Dorarara is suicides. Yeah. So, yeah. just bringing it up, you so, know, so, we talked, I mean, sorry, we talked about bad shit in Goblin Slayer, so we have to talk about yeah. it here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, before you talk, I just want to ask something, just confirm it. The shooting for the gun head that activates Persona, it's because the Persona comes because they actually don't fear death, and because they fear and so, when so, they start fearing death, so, they okay, kill so them, Okay, so I was what? actually going to go into that since this is one of the problems, so I'll actually go ahead and just explain it real quick, like how that mechanic works real quick. So, for this game, because it's different between each of the games, uh, the way it works in this game is that they look back on the traumatic experiences that they had in their past, and they accept their own death and mortality in it, so that way they can activate the power. That's basically how the mechanic works. Okay, that's even that more. That somehow makes up. it a little worse. Yeah. yeah. Like that. I mean, so so basically, it's I the mean, most gruesome yeah. it, version, obviously, of the game series. So simplistically, and without explaining any further part of the games or the actual storyline, I mean, what someone who had no experience would be able to say, right? And I'm just saying this as an equivalency for those of you watching. If you if you have like a problem with this, basically, these people are okay with dying, so they shoot themselves in the head on the off chance that they won't die. Yeah. I mean, basically, if you don't yeah. have any context, that's what it seems like. That's yeah. not the case, it's because the there case. is context. Yeah. But keep it in mind if you watch this and you are thinking of playing it or watching it. Just, it's not always like this, and it is just one of those things. I guess I would like to throw out there, if you aren't a fan of the tone of Persona 3, don't be scared to check out the rest of the games. The, other, the next two games are definitely much lighter in tone than Persona 3 is. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Persona 4 has uh, happy-go-lucky friend vibes, and then uh, Persona 5 is fucked to police vibes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, so are we going to allow the rant of, what right. the heck did we miss? Uh, why don't I get my own mini rant out of the way here? I don't think video games, and much more so Persona than anything else, something that's working on this day-to-day -day system, or the way video games do, I don't think they, I fundamentally don't think they work well as a movie. No. It's not not games like because Persona, a lot of character development is locked behind side optional content. Yes, and and when you're making a movie, you really need to streamline that story. You've only got a limited runtime to actually get this stuff, this story told. So you then and with the game with as many characters as Persona has, I don't think you can functionally make Persona movies. No, because the characters just are not expressed in the story itself. Which is why, honestly, like, Persona 4, in my opinion, does a lot better, because it goes episode by episode. To my understanding of the later series, Persona 4 does it the best out of all of them, and Persona 5 even almost overbalances for that. Yeah. Where it's sort of the other end, but I haven't seen either of them, so. Yeah. So, mini rant out of the way? Yeah, 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 that was just my little mini rant, because I just don't think Persona fundamentally works as a movie. All right. All right. So... My first little section, I'll get out of the way, since the opinion of the ending is the most divisive between all of you, mainly. Um, so, for extra context to the ending. So, here's what happens, basically, when... Um, I'll just call him Anime Jesus at this point, because that's what he re he's meant to represent. Um, Anime Jesus, uh, once he essentially awakens to his final form and power, which is... It, that persona is called Messiah, by the way. Is... Oh no, who could have possibly guessed the crucified man is called Messiah? Yeah, okay, but anyways, uh, moving up, uh, he goes into the egg, and the reason he's floating is because, like, when Igor gives that little exposition how he gains the power of the universe, um, he is now able to create any miracle, no, ma no matter how impossible or illogical it is. Um, so... He, he basically goes up to that egg uh, that's in the last little portion there, and he seals that away with his own soul. And so that's kind of why he, and because of the bonds that he shared with his friends and everything like that, uh, that's why he was able to seal that, because he was able to use their strength to help him create the seal. I think there's a fundamental problem with the story, specifically on that note. Yes. Where it's no matter how illogical or how nonsensical the miracle is. Yes. That fundamentally ruins a story. Yeah. Under, like, just the very description of that. Yeah. So... And, which is also another point. We see it, like, very briefly, because but it cuts to white, like, almost immediately. You get to see Igus shed a tear. And, obviously, she shouldn't be able to because she's a robot, but now she can. Because I think what happened is when he told... I guess to live, he also meant it literally, so she's now alive. See, I'm a real boy! Yes. I think there's a lot of substance to all this that could be deconstructed all day. But also, I don't feel like it necessarily conveys the literal plot very well no. to be an engaging story. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. And it's almost the reverse of a style over substance problem. It's a substance over style problem. Yeah. Some of the other things, like... You said you had a comment about the kid and his storyline versus the game. Yes. So, the main thing with the kid and his storyline... So, some little weird bit. I don't know why the movie decided to do this, but maybe to add, like, some other point to it. But it basically, the kid in the game, he does know that uh, Shinji... He was his mom's killer from the whole beginning. He, there's no question about it. He doesn't think that, he, that it was a shadow. He knows for a fact it was Shinji's, Shinji's, Shinji and Shinji's persona. Um, whereas in the movie, he thinks that it might have been a shadow at some point. It's, it's a little weird. And there's also... What? Uh, Go, Shinji, get in the robot. Uh... I'm sorry, you keep saying it and I only know his last name. Oh yeah, Amada. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's his actual name, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's the other thing I really didn't like about the movie. So how their personas all evolved at the end there, that was not how it worked in the game. They evolved at different points in the story. 
So, for example, let's take Mitsuru, for example, with her little interaction with Yukari when they were on the beach on the Kyoto trip. Which which fucking one is Mitsuru? She's the red hair. Thank you. Yes. And then Yukari's the, the bitch with the pink shirt. That is highly unhelpful, but okay. Oh, is she the one whose dad caused all this? Yes. Also, yes. forgotten plot point that they could have done something with and didn't because they're stupid. Uh, no. Mm. The, that was actually explained away later that yeah. it's key tampered. In the with movies. The they no, they actually did talk they about They did that. explain it, but not well. Not well. We the only problem go, is, as far we, as the character plot goes, it's a very yeah. underdeveloped. Yes, we, we literally a, see her dad three times. It was, all, it was also under, underdeveloped in the game because that's another thing about Yukari is that she was also originally intended to be the, um, the female protagonist alternative to the main male character. And so her role got changed very drastically at the last minute, so that's why her character was very bland in comparison mm. to some of the other female characters. But anyways. Who is the female protagonist then? Uh, someone else entirely, and she's considered non-canon in the universe. Fancy. By the way, there was a point where we were watching the movie... When I just screamed out, oh, when, uh, like, in Revelation. He genuinely did. It was, like, 11 p.m. at night, and he was just like, oh, and I just sat there like, what the fuck did yeah. you figure out? It's at the point where they say, this is the question, this is the question of life. I'm like, oh, it makes sense. That's why the game calls the main story the question in the epilogue the answer. Yeah. So, and that's the other thing, too. That we're, we're not going over the epilogue. Yeah, we're not going to go over that. All it reveals is that the main character at the end transformed into a door. Yes, and that's also what the Turk community calls him, Dorkin. <laughs> I'll, I'll save that much, but anyways. Um, what else? So, I was going over, yeah, so their personas evolve basically throughout the story, not all at once like they did. That's the basic gist of what I was getting at there. So, and I think, I think that would actually, that actually helps a little bit more in the game, in comparison to just them having a sudden evolution in it's the middle of a final to be at battle, the peak of their arc. So the, in the final battle, you yeah. probably didn't even notice that it happened. But yeah. you can't peak their arc in six and a half hours. Yeah, we didn't get yeah. anyone's arc in six and a half hours. Yeah, no. most of them didn't have an arc. No, yeah. literally only Jimpei. Yeah, and main character and Ryoji, but even that was like more about Ryoji than it was about the main character. Only Jimpei, yeah. Ryoji, and Dorakun. Fun Ryuji. fact, though, Ryoji got more character development in the movie than he did in the game. He was more of a side and, character in the game and than it genuinely, and nothing that you could do with. And it genuinely made the movie so much better, so thank you, God. Yes. I loved his character in, in the story. Yeah, and he, yes. like, showed up, he was just, like, super friendly, and then he was, like... He sent out, like, invitations to every single girl in the school. <laughs> he shows yeah. up to the uh -huh. cafe with a girl on each arm. Yes. Yes. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And even even through the fourth movie, he, like, he kind of, like, came in and he was like, please, please, like. <sighs> yeah. It was adorable. I actually really liked that. Yeah. So, Ryoji honestly got the best end of the stick in this movie, I felt. Because his character development, outside of, like, the femsey thing, because you can... Social link him in the female route, but I'm not going to get into that because that's all from the timeline that. stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he basically gets the, the best portion of the development in this, which they didn't give him in the game, so I'm glad about that, if nothing else. Um, let's get into some other things. So, even though there seems to be, like, some things going on between Yukari and the main character, um... It, at the end or at the beginning there there's nothing in the movie uh, but that's also because in the game this is also a partial social sim you can romance all the characters and persona 3 is the only game in this series where you have to romance all the female characters if you want to complete their social links there's no option to not do so yeah every other game made it an option and if you were being a bad person you were just a bad person yeah in this game no canonically the main character is just a bad person yes yeah he just kind of goes. I, I honestly, funny enough, I'm I'm just gonna explain that. I'm just gonna explain this by his, uh, by via his like kind of opinion. I don't think that he really cares all that much because the way his attitude is is he kind of kind of just goes along with things and just lets things happen to him. So he probably just said yes and probably didn't really think too much of it. That doesn't make him any better. No, it does. No, it doesn't. But I'm just saying that but, that's that does probably. But knowing that fact does explain why it seems like he has a romantic uh, relationship with every single female. Yes, I'm not uh, like I'm not I'm not defending him here, but I'm just saying that's probably the reason why. Anyways, so 
that's another thing. They fixed this immediately in all the other, other all the other sequels. Anyone else got any side things that I could maybe try and explain? Anyone else have any rants they want to go on? I mean, look, I'm I'm not here to ask a question and get you to explain it to me about the game because I really don't care. Okay, that's fine. Then I mean, I just... then it doesn't matter. I just want to know if anyone yeah. does have anything that they want to care about. If they don't, then well, I mean, I'm no, done with my rant. It's it's not that I don't care in general. It's that I I don't care how the movie differed from the game. Because okay. I do consider them two different things. Yes. I feel like the the game kind of... Fe- uh, sorry. The movie felt like... Um, it I'm felt more like... so just here on a time crunch. So I just oh, you want... have plenty of time. The, yeah. the movie felt like a gift to fans of the game. Yes. Like, it didn't feel like it was meant to be a movie that appealed to people. It felt like it was made solely for the purpose of being, like, a thing for the fans. Yes. Which isn't bad. I mean, that's essentially the... the purpose of every ova in anime you know some things are just made for the benefit of the fans one piece does it too there's like the anniversary figures and movies that aren't canonical but are like just there for the fans to see the characters in cool outfits yeah and that's what this felt like but because of that it didn't to me feel like i don't feel like i could play the game right now um and go into it thinking oh i kind of know what's gonna happen because i feel like i don't yeah like, it's so different. Yeah. You know, just just because it has to be. It's six hours and 29 minutes. That includes credits. Yeah. You know, where this game is at least 60 hours of gameplay. Yeah. So it's barely a tenth the amount of content. Yeah. So while, while it feels like, it feels like a nice gift to the fans from yes. the studio and the creators, but it doesn't feel like something that you should watch if you're not already a fan. Yeah, I guess there's a bit of a difference in adaptations in that regard. Because some adaptations are just meant to be, like, made for the fan. Or other adaptations are meant to be bringing that that story to another medium. Yeah, and that's not what this is. This is not bringing Persona to to another medium. If anything, from what I'm aware of the franchise and series, if any, if any part of the Persona things that have been animated are meant to bring in fans, it's four. Yes. Which is an actual anime series. Yeah. Um, not this. Yeah. This is just a the, gift. This is this is meant for the people who were already fans of the game. Honestly, yeah, I can, I can definitely attest to that. Which, which is why, to me, it's not as interesting to say, "Oh, I didn't understand this and get an explanation from you," because it, it feels like a drop in the bucket. Like yeah. it's nice to be able to ask someone if I do have a genuine question, but it just feels like every question I ask is a drop in a leaking bucket that gets bigger every time I ask a question. You know, like I'm not actually getting anywhere by hearing your explanation because it's just opening up more and more questions. Yeah. You know, and obviously we can't. And at that point, if you actually care, go play the game. (laughs) Exactly. And because we're reviewing the anime, we can't really do like a game playthrough review or something like that. Like, (laughs) uh, you know. Potential content for me. Realm can. Realm can. But the rest of us can't. You know, I don't think Nick Knack's played three yet. I played like the first three or four hours of three. Okay, yeah. so not much. I played about as much as I've watched for the movie, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I I mean it's it's one of those things where, you know, I mean if if this had been something I was into and I might not have su- submitted this just because, this doesn't feel super faithful, and I think in this case our rules would have allowed you to put in four first. Yeah. Because four is technically a different story. Yeah. Like so it shares it, the same timeline, yeah. but, it's, but it's a different it's story. Different story and so different I feel characters. like we probably should have clarified to you that you could just put in four. Yeah. But it, I, I think I didn't grasp just how disconnected these games were. Yeah. From one another. To me, it kind of Persona 3, 4, 5 just felt like, oh, they're just continuations of one another, you know? And they're really not. And that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. They're and really I mean, their own standalone products just in a series that's shared across a similar franchise. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, it, it makes sense. And I, I can definitely see the gameplay mechanics in the movies. Yeah. Like, I can see that NPC gets to, like, evolve and change his, uh... Yeah. His thingies. Yeah, personas, his personas, yeah. You know? I can see how the calendar works in-game. Yeah. I get the kind of dialogue and choosing different options and the contracts and the elevator dude. Yes. I see how all of that works in a game. The problem is none of it translates to a cinematic experience. I brought this up when we were watching it. Igor serves no narrative purpose Which in the Which one films. is Igor? The elevator guy. He's the, uh, he's the elevator guy. Yeah. The guy with the long nose. The one who looked like Rumpelstiltskin. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. 
in the games, he's a gameplay mechanic. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the movies, he does absolutely nothing for the plot. Zero. Zilch. Nada. His assistant does more than he does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Speed round questions. Okay. Uh, more backstory on Cherry. Do we get that in game? Sorry. Say, sorry. Who? Who is it? Uh, Red villainous Red girl. Red oh, villainous redhead. Chidori. Yeah. Yes, we do. And in fact, she actually has extra. She actually. You don't get a social link with her, but you do get much more development between her and Junpei. While okay. we're talking about Chidori, I want to make the comment that I was actually really bothered by her name. Um, and Nick Knack thought this was absolutely the stupidest thing ever. But her name actually bothers me a bit because whenever someone says Chidori, I just think of Kakashi and Sasuke because they have the Chidori, which is their, like, signature attack. Was it the was it the chirp of a thousand crickets or something? It's what it's, that's what it means? Ah! Okay, stop throwing stuff at each other. But it, it's, it's right, the chirp of a thousand crickets, right? Something like that? Yeah, so I just think of, like, the Naruto fucking attack. Yeah, I, Morton, I, you really played both sides there. I threw it at Seki. Seki didn't throw it at me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need to finish up my speed <laughs> round because we're about to hit 30 minutes. God damn it. You have time. Go. Okay. That teacher. Does that teacher actually have the same personality in the game as in the anime? Uh, the the, the homeroom teacher? Yes. Oh my god, she has the most she, amazing personality. She actually, you actually get a social link with her, technically. Okay, no, but she has the most amazing personality. She just, like, spends it... Like, somebody comes in and they're like, I want this seat, and one of the kids says... Oh, Some yeah, other, that was I guess. Yeah, one, one of the kid. No, it wasn't just I guess. Ryuji yeah. did it, too. Right? Where, where they, like, just Ryuji is from seat. Persona 5, Ryuji. Uh, Ryuji. It's Ryuji. Oh my fucking god, <laughs> who cares? Either way, they choose a seat, and then one of the other students is like somebody sits there and the teacher's like they're not here today so they don't exist yes yes i fucking love her i just I, in my head i just imagine that she just accepts that her students just turn up dead so frequently that she, she seating does not matter yeah seating charts do not matter in her in her world yeah so yes you do actually have a social link with her although it's an in, although it's an indirect social link Damn. Um, because you play oh, I've heard that uh, the um, the virtual on, uh, online I mean, MMO in game uh, innocence. I mean, in you online. could do that in the game, <laughs> but yeah, you uh, yeah. they fall in love on accident. In I mean, I tap. Oh my! God. Yeah. And then they meet in real life, and oh shit! Yeah, I just fell in love with my teacher. Yeah, well, more so. And then the teacher actually at the end, there's a post credits to the game where the teacher, if you go visit her, uh, she re recognizes the little like I heart you or whatever thing that the protag saved at the end there and uh, is too embarrassed to ask him out on a date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. another question. Yes. How the fuck does he have more than one persona? Or do they all have more than fucking one persona? Oh, wait, I think I got this one. Yes. So they can acquire different ones, and you can <laughs> level them up, and they have different power thresholds. So some of them you're only meant to use at the very beginning of the game. Like uh, that first one that he calls out. Yes. Um, that one, apparently, you, you can't use that, like, in the final boss. Like, he you does can, in the movie. Sucks. Yeah. But, like, it won't really work. So he can, like, acquire new ones. And I think you do that through Mr. Rumpelstiltskin. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and as a mechanic, how that works is the reason he can use more than one persona and the others can't. Um, is he is what's known as the wild card in in the in the universe? The he's playable the character. Yeah, basically, yeah. he's protagonist kin. Yeah, he so. is not technically an NPC. He is the PC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he that's why he can wield multiple personas and stuff like that. So yeah, and then any and other... Igor just merges like squishes them together. Yeah, basically. Okay. So wow. Any yeah. Any other questions? I had one. I can't think of it. We'll just say forget it. Okay. I do actually have another thing another thing to say, like, separately. How much time are... Do we You've have got time. Keep okay. going. Go. Okay. So, um, my other thing is, is the attendant, uh, Elizabeth. Um, fun fact. So, all that little montage that we got of the protagonist and her... Um, it is actually a thing that you can do in the game, but instead of it happening all at once, like, obviously they just did this to mainly save time, um, but it is something that you can do throughout the game, and it's actually how you unlock her, her boss battle. I so. mean, I actually really like that part of the story, so. Yeah. I, I liked it where it was in the movie, because in the movie, it felt like she, uh, she came down, really try to, like baby him into the realization of the answer of the question of life. Yeah. Because he was being a bullheaded idiot. 
Yeah. And I kind of like that. It worked narratively really yeah. well. Yeah. And actually, the other interesting thing, so in that little flashback before she appears, where basically... That was the, the bad ending. That, right? was the, that was the bad ending, where if you choose to kill Ryoji, the fall will just happen and they'll have no idea it's happening. They'll just all die. So, yeah. And they lived happily ever after the yeah. end. No, they didn't. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So that that's the thing, and the 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 best the the funniest part. Obviously, they're not going to show this in the movie, but um, in the game, uh, one of her one of her requests is to actually go into the protag's room, and from there you actually smash like legitimately. Oh my! That actually actively made me a little unhappy about that. <laughs> like I I enjoyed the platonic like older <sighs> sisterly character that she played in no. the movie. In any but, other Persona game, you'd be given the option. Yes. Okay, no, alright, we're done talking about this. Let my older sister be. No, okay. no, because that's the thing, also, throughout all the games, at least in the game specifically, this, this doesn't really apply to the movie, or even the Persona 4 anime. Um, they all fall for the main character. Yeah, I am very well aware yes. that main character smashes anything and everything. You might except, not for like in fi- except for in 5, because that's... Uh, you might okay. not like it. You yeah. might not want to accept mm. it. But that is peak masculinity. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was the up with, like the mob like monsters at the end of the fight? They actually had numbers on them. I thought they killed all the numbers. Oh. So the no, they were if you notice there were like more than one of each. It was basically like the tower was like manifesting multiple of the bosses to like kill them. Because those are the oh, mini bosses, the cards. Yes. Yeah. Those are the cards, the the king, the queen, the joker. And, it's, and the also it's not even like and like the number is also more so just to represent like which of the arcana they're associated with. Yeah. It's not even necessarily it's that like a tarot like, deck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was like it's just so confusing. Like Yeah, no, because I since, like, are, I said the same thing. I, w- I was like, why can't they just like beat these fuckers? They already beat them and then they zoomed out and there were like ten of each and I was like, Oh. Oh, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, all of a sudden, I get why this is hard. Yeah. Um, with that being said, I think we need to draw our person for next week. Yes. Woo. Yay. Drum roll, please. Hey, Nick Deck. Woo. Nice. What are you forcing us to watch? Oh, my God. It's just one hour and a half movie. Oh, no. Oh, it's not a movie? Oh, Fate great. Grand Order First Order. Ah, okay. Wait, didn't we already watch that? No, you, Seki, and I watched it on our own time. Oh yeah. I want to move us through it as I want to move us through Fate Grand Order as we get as we do the stuff in the D and D campaign. So okay. I'll submit Camelot when we get to Camelot in the campaign and Babylonia when we get to Babylonia. So next week we're gonna watch uh, Fate Grand Order, the First Order. Yep. Yeah. So uh, see you then. Lots of movies so far. Bye bye. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.